Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Shakayla Mitwan and I do videos on fashion and lifestyle. And today I'm going to be doing a get to know me tag, which is like a Q&A style video. I found some questions on Google and I'm just going to answer these questions. So I'm going to ask the questions, answer the questions, and you guys can get to know a little bit more about me. Um, I know I have a few new subscribers to the channel, so I want you guys to know me a little bit more personally. So let's get started. The first question is, what is your general outlook on life? Life is not about reaching a destination, but it's more about the small things. It's more about the journey. It's more about the, the moments, the moments that make up life. I feel like sometimes people get so caught up in, oh, I'll be happy when this happens, or I'll be happy when I get this, or when I'm this rich, I'll be happy. And when I have this type of spouse, I'll be happy. But people forget like right now, this moment, like this moment right now is what is so great about life that's that's the out like that's my outlook like you have to hold on to these moments because all you have right now is just a moment in life and we don't know what's going to happen the next second the next day and just having just holding on to that moment that's my outlook in li on life grab the moment live for the live in the moment of course plan for the future but live in the moment are you more optimistic or pessimistic? I would say I am optimistic. Sometimes, you know, I am a realist, so some things that I say might make a person think that I'm a pessimist, but I'm not a pessimist, I'm just realistic. But I always look for the positive in things. I try to always look for the positive. So I, I would say I'm an optimist. What is your attitude when faced with a challenge? So when faced with a challenge, I try to get steel. And I try to think of all the ways I can overcome the challenge. It's going to be like, okay, what can I do to fix this? I try not to get so caught up in the emotion. I just think, what can I do to, what can I do to fix this? What can I do to get this situation under control? You know, I just start racking my brain. But, you know, sometimes you can't come up with a solution to fix or to overcome a challenge. So it can make you feel bad. It can bring you down a little bit. If you can't fix it, you know, just roll with it. It's happening. Just keep it pushing. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Because what else can you do, you know? What is the limiting belief that has held you back in life? Oh, this is deep. This is real deep. As much as I don't want to say this, I think what's held me back in life and a lot of areas of my life is measuring up to other people's expectations. That's something that has held me back because when you are operating in a way where you feel like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to to be what this person wants me to be, or I don't know if I can give this person what they need, it can you can psych yourself out with that. And if you're not willing to let that let that go and just arrive at a situation and do your best and give your best and know that what you're giving is enough. If you're not, if you don't have that confidence, like you will psych yourself out. And I know that in the past I have psyched myself out wondering, oh, am I able to give this person, give this, you know, this career, give anything that I'm needing to do in my life, am I able to give this 110%? So that's something that has held me back, but it is something that no longer holds me back because it's something that I'm, I've been working through and I've been working on. I am a work in progress and a part of being a work in progress, you, you gotta face you know the things that you aren't good at and the things that don't make you look, that don't make you look all glamorous. The things that, that are ugly about you. That's it, trying to meet up to other people's expectations and also trying to meet up to my own expectations, so. How often do you reflect in an attempt to grow? Uh, too much, too much. Like I'm constantly thinking about 
different aspects of my personality, different ways I deal with people, ways I communicate, ways that I accomplish goals to see, okay, what am I doing that I could be doing better? What can I do right now that will help me be more successful? So I'm constantly assessing different situations in my life, different um, situations I've been in career-wise to see what can I tweak or what can I completely change in order to, to be more successful, to, to grow as a person, to grow as a woman. So yeah, I'm constantly thinking about things like that. I think I'm pretty self-aware. What is the most influential advice you've ever received? Well, some advice that I, that I once read was that growth is on the other side of your comfort zone. And it's something I really took to heart because in life, you can find, you can get into certain careers, you can get into certain relationships, even friendships, and you might become complacent. You might get to a place where you're like, oh, I'm just so comfortable you might not want to grow anymore. And so I'm always reminded by with that with that quote, with that advice is that whenever things are getting too comfortable, I need to I need to rev it up. I need to like raise my standards a little bit higher. I need to work a little bit harder because I want to constantly be growing. I don't want to be a person that's complacent in my life. So I really like that advice. How much has your mindset changed? Well, I would say just like in the last decade, my mindset has changed drastically. You know, I have a better idea of who I am now, now that I'm like, I'm about to be 29 in a month. So I have a way better idea of who I am as a woman. I have way more insight, way more knowledge, way more wisdom than I did 10 years ago. So my mindset has changed where did you go to college? So I went to a college. I'm not going to tell y'all my exact college. I don't want to tell all of that. But I went to a college here in my town. I didn't do like the... I didn't do like a go away college where you live in a dorm and stuff. I still, I basically just went to a college. It's like a community college, but it wasn't a community college. It was like an extension of a university. So I did that and I was able to stay at home. I just was not thrilled about the idea of going off to college and living with strangers. I'm probably the only person like that because I know a lot of people are like super excited, like they're ready to go. But I was t the total opposite at 18. I was like, I don't want to go off and live with strange strangers. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to live in the comfort of my home, what I'm used to. Oh, see, comfort zone. That's why I have to get out of my comfort zone because that's a part of who I am. Got to grow outside of that. But yeah, it was. I knew that would be totally out of my comfort zone. And so I did go to a college very close to my home. Yeah. But it was, an, it was a cool experience. I liked it. What did you major in? In college, I majored in business administration. What type of student were you in high school? In high school... Some people might think that I was just like a super smart student, but I was just, I really was just kind of coasting in high school, but I made super good grades, but I just, I just, I, I was just kind of like, it, it just wasn't really, really hard to me. School wasn't, especially my senior year. I had like two art classes. It was easy. I was definitely a student that took things I took my grades serious and stuff, but I just didn't believe in just overly stressing myself out with schoolwork and stuff. How did you change as a student th throughout your academic journey? I was more, I would say I was more serious about grades in high school than I was in college. Um, because the whole thing about high school is, you know, you need good grades to get into a good college. But once I got into college, I was like, okay. I did my I did my best and I did pretty good in college too. But yeah, I just wasn't one to to be like, I gotta study for five, six hours every day. Like no. No. I would do my studying. It just everything was in moderation. Wasn't no overdoing it. What subject interested you the most? What subject in college interested me the most? I will say in school I was bored. I was very bored in college. 
extremely bored actually. I was sitting in class this morning. Um, what am I gonna do with this degree? Uh, and then I took this class. It was called D Diversity in the Workplace and it was like the first time I really enjoyed a class. And my teacher, my professor, she was a black woman and I feel like she was, I believe she was my first black professor. And she was a woman and I just remember sitting in class just staring at her and she was so brilliant and she was beautiful. She was brilliant. She was just everything that you would want to be like. Um, and I just, I enjoyed, you know, her, her uh, immense amount of knowledge. So I enjoyed the heck out of that class. And it was a subject that, you know, really interests me, which is like diversity and stuff like that. So it was a good, it was a good little class. If you could redo a school experience, what would it be? If I could redo a school experience, what would it be? I want to focus more on a degree that had a had a career like right at the end of the road. <laughs> like wasn't so vague, not vague, but just wasn't so broad. Like if you do something with business administration, you can do pretty much anything. But once I got out of school, I realized how people that go into like engineering and people that go to school for medicine, they really do have an advantage when it comes to getting jobs. There's always like medicine and stuff. Like there's always a demand for someone who is a nurse or a doctor. There's always demand for engineers. So if I could go back in time, I would change my major. In fact, if I could go back in time, I might have not even gone to college, but that's another video. That's a whole nother video. I would have I would have taken another, a whole nother lane if I could redo things. What do you think needs to change about our current educational system? Well, a little bit like what I just was, was talking about. I think we're just told from our counselors that you need to go to college, you need to go to college. You're gonna be a success if you go to college. And that's just not the truth. Going to college does not mean you are going to be super rich or have a job at the end of it it doesn't mean that at all it doesn't mean that like that's not something i don't think that's something we should tell the youth like going to school should be it should be about okay you know you know what you want to do i mean because this is the thing you don't want to waste money you don't want to waste money going to school and then you're just basically going and passing time and having fun. I know some people say, oh, it's just for the, you know, it's a good experience. You find yourself. No, I just don't agree with that. But I think we have to stop pushing people towards going to college and more pushing people towards what are their goals? What do they want to be? What do they want to do for work? And pushing them in that direction. Because you might want to do a job or you might have a career in mind that doesn't require a degree. It might require a trade, but for sure, like if you're going into, you know, like I said, medicine, engineering, computer science, something in the tech world, yeah, go to college. Like find the best college, go. But I don't think it's for everyone. We have to stop telling or looking down on people that choose, that have other choices and that wanna do different things with their life other than college. Like we can all be a success. We don't all have to take one road to success. And some people, they don't go to trade school, they don't go to college, and they end up being freaking millionaires. So, you know, it's all about your mindset. It's about how much work you're willing to put in and how driven you are as a person, how ambitious you are. That all goes into, you know, if you are a success or not. So these are some wider questions. What do you do for fun? Some things, y'all, I feel like I feel like I don't be doing a lot of stuff for fun. Like my YouTube channel is something that I do for fun. I love doing fashion hauls. I enjoy shopping, thrifting, reselling. I like to do photo shoots for my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram at Shakayla underscore Mitwan and you can see all of my, see all my little fashions and my little styles, the way I fix up my outfits. Yeah, so doing my YouTube, that takes up so much of my time. Also, I enjoy doing songwriting and singing in my free time. So yeah, I do have a single out, y'all. It is called Obsession by Kayla. 
and you can find it on any streaming platform i'm on apple music i'm on spotify so yes obsession by kayla it's a real good song i'll probably go ahead and link the song down below um, so y'all can listen to it what is something that you could spend hours doing something i could spend hours doing is just like going to the studio and recording music writing singing like i love i love writing I love singing, I love creating. That's like my sweet spot. So that's something I could spend hours doing. What is something you wish you did more often? Now, I really wish that I could get back to the gym, but I am, you know, I work out at home for right now because I just wanna be kinda safe. So I wish I was at the gym more often, but unfortunately I'm not. I do have it. In a, a little, yeah, I do have an elliptical, so I get to get on my elliptical from time to time. But I really want to make a practice of getting on my elliptical at least an hour every day. So far, I've been doing like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. But yeah, I'm working on just like turning on an hour long show and just getting on that elliptical for an hour a day. Like, I got to, y'all, I got to. So that's something I wish I did more often. If you had to watch a documentary, what would you want it to be about? Ooh, y'all, I love a good documentary. Really, anything about history. I like learning about kings and queens and pharaohs and stuff like, ooh, I get excited about history because I feel like learning about history is important because it impacts the way we are today. People say that history repeats itself sometimes. so. You gotta know your history. You gotta know what has happened before you to make sense of what's happening right now. Like, so history, ooh, I love me some history. Any, any kind of history documentary, I'm watching it. What do you always have on in the background? I always have a YouTube video playing. It's interesting though, I almost never just turn on music while I'm doing my hair and makeup. I like to hear people talking. So yeah, YouTube is usually on 24 seven. How do you feel about travel? I think travel is amazing. It's a way to open up your mind, open up your views on other people, on other cultures and traveling just makes you a more open person. I really do believe that and it expands your horizons. How have your interests changed over the years? They haven't changed a whole, whole lot, but if I'm doing like a, a 10 year difference, like when I was 18, I loved painting, I loved drawing. I had just started to write songs at 18, and now my interests are revolve around my YouTube and music. So I guess I just changed out my art for media and YouTube. So yeah, they haven't changed just a whole lot, but just, just a little bit. So y'all, that's all the questions I got for today. Uh, if y'all want me to do another video, with all of y'all questions, just feel free to ask me a question down below and I'll include it in another Q&A. Go ahead, got hair, got hair in my face, crap. If you made it this far with me, y'all, then that means you, that means you kinda enjoyed this video. So, don't play me, go ahead and like the video. Go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell for post notifications. I'll see y'all next time in my next video, okay? Bye. I'm gonna be